It is mainly young women who can be seen in the paintings of this great artist. Young women sitting in an armchair, looking out of the window, casually putting on their shoes or pausing, lost in thought, looking at an object. In his works, this artist often chose the motif of the reader, a young woman, alone or in a circle of friends. The lamp is a recurring pictorial element, and like the glow of the fireplace or the light of twilight on a terrace, shows the painter's characteristic approach to light. This creates a special and intimate atmosphere in the works, so that the viewer almost has the impression of disturbing the scenery. Delphine Angeras was born in Corcoron in 1857. He studied first at the École de Décoration de la Ville de Paris and later at the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris. In 1890, his works were exhibited for the first time at the Salon de Paris, in which he regularly participated in the following years. After having started his career with landscape painting, Delphine Algeras then turned to portrait painting of young, elegant women at the beginning of the 20th century. Probably one of Angelros's most famous works is a young woman reading by a window. Angelros died in 1945 and today his works are in possession of the Musée de Puy and Musée d'Avignon, among others. His father was Casimir Angeros, and his mother was Delphine Laurent. Angeros studied under watercolorist Gaston Gérard at the École de Dessin de la Ville de Paris, as well as Jean-Léon Jérôme at the Beaux-Arts and Pascal Dumas Bouveret. Even though he started his career by mainly painting landscapes, later it became evident that his love was for painting women. He changed genre, focusing mainly on the portraiture of elegant young women by lamplight. He would become an excellent painter of nudes, and many of his later works, such as La Sieste, are of an erotic and sensual nature. From 1890 onwards, Angeras exhibited his works at the Paris Salon, joining the Société des Artistes Français in 1901. Also, the Musée de Puy and Musée d'Avignon both have collections of his works. With an academic style, this prodigious artist painted portraits, existentialized nudity, with an expression of grace and tenderness that makes the canvas dance before our eyes. In addition, he painted interiors and used mainly watercolors, oils, and pastels. Delphine Enjolras is best known for his intimate portraits of young women often lit by lamplight. Perhaps his most famous work is Young Woman Reading by a Window. Academic art, or academicism, or academism, is a style of painting and sculpture produced under the influence of European academies of art. Specifically, academic art is the art and artists influenced by the standards of the French Academy des Beaux-Arts. Academic art was practiced under the movements of neoclassicism and romanticism, and the art that followed these two movements in an attempt to synthesize both of their styles, and which is best reflected by the paintings of William Adolphe Bougereau, Thomas Couture, and Hans Machart. In the 19th century, in the revived form of the debate, the attention and the aims of the art world 
became to synthesize the line of neoclassicism with the color of romanticism. In order to be an academic artist, young artists spent four years in rigorous training. In France, only students who passed an exam and carried a letter of reference from a noted professor of art were accepted at the academy school, the École des Beaux-Arts. Drawings and paintings of the nude, called academies, were the basic building blocks of academic art and the procedure for learning to make them was clearly defined. First, students copied prints after classical sculptures, becoming familiar with the principles of contour, light, and shade. The copy was believed crucial to the academic education. From copying works of past artists, one would assimilate their methods of art making. To advance to the next step, and every successive one, students presented drawings for evaluation. If approved, they would then draw from plaster casts of famous classical sculptures. Only after acquiring these skills were artists permitted entrance to classes in which a live model posed. Painting was not taught at the École des Beaux-Arts until after 1863. To learn to paint with a brush, the student first had to demonstrate proficiency in drawing, which was considered the foundation of academic painting. Only then could the pupil join the studio of an academician and learn how to paint. Throughout the entire process, Competitions with a predetermined subject and a specific allotted period of time measured each student's progress. The most famous art competition for students was the Prix de Rome. The winner of the Prix de Rome was awarded a fellowship to study at the Académie Française School at the Via Medici in Rome for up to five years. To compete, an artist had to be of French nationality, male, under 30 years of age, and single. He had to have met the entrance requirements of the École and have the support of a well-known art teacher. The competition was grueling, involving several stages before the final one, in which 10 competitors were sequestered in studios for 72 days to paint their final history paintings. The winner was essentially assured a successful professional career. As noted, a successful showing at the Salon was a seal of approval for an artist. Artists petitioned the Hanging Committee for optimal placement on the line or at eye level. After the exhibition opened, Artists complained if their works were skied or hung too high. The ultimate achievement for the professional artist was election to membership in the Académie Française and the right to be known as an academician. We hope you have enjoyed watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. Please give us a thumbs up. Also, please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. We are super excited about you watching our video and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following video.